Welcome to the first series of Ex Asylum Seeker Memoir, which is an arts driven project that seeks to capture the lived experiences and stories of ex asylum seekers across Wales through video and storytelling. The project will express the experiences of women and men of all ages around Wales, celebrating the contribution they have made to their local communities pre and post their asylum claim. The project is being funded by Race Council Cymru as part of their new Black History Wales theme, Celebrating Local Heroes and Sheroes, which is run all year round until September 2022. Celebrating Local Heroes and Sheroes helps to identify people like the interviewees you'll see today who are being celebrated for their interventions, achievements and contributions to Wales pre and post their asylum claim. The aim and objective of the project is to uncover the sometimes hidden and often forgotten stories and experiences of ex-asylum seekers and to give them the well-needed platform to tell their stories in a safe space. The aspiration is to raise awareness of these stories amongst public decision makers so that they can ensure that policies have a positive impact on the lives of current asylum seekers and refugees and their integration into Welsh society. It also aims to promote understanding of asylum and refugee rights and issues and enables asylum seekers and refugees' voices to be heard whilst debunking a few myths along the way. Thank you. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? So your name and what was your life like in your home country? Right, so I am now Mrs. Emma Cowell. And when I came to Britain, I was Emma Allen. And life back in Liberia, prior to the war, was good. Um, we live a decent life, but unfortunately, when you have civil war, things fall apart and people have to move away for their lives to different parts of the world. and we were in the situation where we had to leave and it was really urgent. It was not planned, but it was like we had to get out because of various reasons and connections to the then regime. So, yeah. So why did you come to the UK, Emma? Um, we were fleeing civil war, like I said um, before. Uh, we had a situation where we have family members that are part of a regime that was actually coming to an end. And growing up in Africa, when civil war hits and the government in power at that point in time, they're not usually spared, neither are their family members. So I think we were in a situation where we, it became dangerous for us to stay in Liberia. So we had to come, me and my sister, and this is how we settled in the UK. Perfect, thank you, Emma. How easy was it to integrate into Welsh society when you arrived? And did you find support services easily accessible? My personal experience, from what I remember, 2003 September, when we came to the UK, um, we landed in Heathrow, and we stayed a few days before reporting ourselves to the Home Office. And we were taken straight away to Margate, to a hotel where they hosted refugees and asylum seekers. And we stayed there for about 12 weeks, if I remember well. So, well, we live in the hotel as refugees, as you do when you're a refugee. And you have to queue for food. You have to queue for the toilet. And we were there for about almost 12 weeks. And we had a coach come one morning to take us to Wales, because obviously they had designated different parts of the UK to send different people. And me and my younger sister in Ketchi, we were actually put on the coach from Margate for about three, three and a half hours. And it brought us to this little city in Wales called Newport. So this is where our life started. And when we got here, I personally think we were fortunate enough to have the national asylum system then. And they took us to a house in Crino Road. And when we got there, we were provided for. Um, every document that needed to be filled in, we were actually assisted to have them filled in. And my sister was in year 10, 
year attendance. So we, it did take a, quite a few weeks to get her into school because it was the time we actually came into the country and they had to get her, you know, settled and before finding school for her and everything. So, but she finally did get into school and we started to live as asylum seekers for moms. Thank you, Emma. Did you find support services easily accessible? Yes, I think I did. Because like I said, back then, I'm not sure what the system is like now. There were people there to actually assist you with various things that you needed to know about the system. Obviously, there's the home office and there's the refugee council and there was the national asylum system as well. So we had all those people to actually um, point us to the right direction as to you know, filling in forms that we needed for benefits and that we needed to live on, whatever situation, like if we needed to go to college, I know it was limitations to going to university, but you were allowed to get qualifications for whichever college you wanted to go to in neighboring college that was in the area where you live. So that was my experience. Thank you, Emma. Do you believe that access to employment and university being prohibited to asylum seekers was a limitation? In a way, yes, it is a limitation because as a human, if you're fleeing war and you're going to a new country, a strange land where you know nobody, you're going to start life all on your own to enable you to um, integrate yourself into society. I think it's really vital that people should be allowed to actually go to school if they want to go to school, if they want to go to university, go to university, if they want to go to college, go to college. If there are jobs available, it don't have to be high-profile jobs, but I think any paying job to actually sustain themselves, instead of like depending on the state to actually look after you, I think it would be convenient enough to have people work and you know and assimilate themselves in the society. With doing so, you get to socialize and meet new people, and you feel at home and you feel like you belong, so it is important that they should not have limitations of what people can do with their lives when they are asylum seekers. Excellent, thank you, Emma. How long did it take until you received settled status? And when you received settled status, how easy was it to access immunities like housing benefits and further education? It took us about four and a half to five years because we came here in September 2003 and we got our leave to remain in um, 2008 but it was early 2008 and for what I remembered um, we were actually granted indefinite leave to remain which means you become part of the British system and you become British citizen when you want if you want so we were really for it, we we're fortunate enough to get that status however it did take us a long time to get that because I think five years for two young women in a strange country who are able-bodied people who could have actually looked after themselves within a five-year period, it was a really long time. However, we did get there in the end. So, um. Thank you, Emma. And how easy was it to access housing benefits, further education and employment? Um, my personal experience, like I said, I didn't have the language barrier. So that's one thing I'm always grateful for we knew how to ask questions. We were really good at asking questions as to what we wanted, what we needed to actually sustain ourselves, me and Kechi. So we, we found our own way, we did ask questions. There were people to help, to be quite honest. There were people who came around and told us, you know, okay, you're gonna be moving this house now because obviously you've got your leave to remain. So this is where it's designated for you. But once you start to work, when you can look after yourself, you have to go and find your own place and, you know, pay your rent or, when you start working, probably mortgage. So we had that. But when it came to me finding job, I remember then there was a um, there was a company called A4E, and I was actually sent to them because I had done a qualification in Nash in Spiti. I did a accounting qualification, so I had that as a backup. And when I went to A4E, they filled in forms for me, and I think it was a few days after. I was sent to George Street Furnitures and that was where my first job was in the UK. And I was there for a little while and I moved up to the valleys. Excellent, thank you, Emma. If you had one advice relating to refugees and asylum seekers for the Home Office, what would it be? 
I'm going to be really honest. I'm not sure what the system is like now because, like I said, we've been here for almost two decades, 19 years this year. So my personal experience, I would say there were limitations, yes. But back then, there were different systems that you could actually find your way by asking questions and getting support, you know, from various organizations. However, now I have no idea how it works when it comes to asylum seeking and refugees, what, what the situations are like, um, I don't know. But I would say if you have come here from a war thrown nation or for whichever reason you are escaping your home country, I would advise just persevere. Persevere and it takes you a long way. I know sometimes the language barrier, it can be a big hindrance, but you will meet people in life to say no to you, but there will be somebody to say yes. So keep asking and just keep persevering. Look after yourself. Do not put yourself into any trouble. Do not get into trouble with the law. And I think sometimes once you do as you're told and do not get yourself into trouble with the law, you will get what you need. That's a fantastic uh, bit of advice there, Emma, perseverance. So thank you. Um, what can be improved within the current asylum system uh, that would make a real positive impact on the lives of refugees and asylum seekers? Um, that takes me back to my the first question. Um, what could be improved is the limitation that is put on what they can do. Because that was what our problem it is like a hindrance where you can't fully live your life as to what you need to do to make yourself better. Because we had to wait, like I said, for, some, for five years before getting our leave to remain in the UK. And with that point in time, my younger sister that came here with me, she wanted to go to university. She had so many aspirations. There were so many things she wanted to do, but she couldn't because she was limited to doing them. And if probably the home office or the asylum system could actually help people to integrate themselves into the society, you know, I know there are security restrictions, obviously, which is quite understandable. But I think once a person has registered themselves as an asylum seeker and they're, they are in the system, the government know they're here. So I can't see any reason why they should be limited to going to university or going to college or finding a job. Because when they can't look after themselves, they become a liability to the government. And that what the stigma stigma is about being a asylum seeker because when people don't understand they'll be like oh these people come here and they live on benefits no it's not their choice to live on benefits it's because they are being restricted that's the reason why they're living on benefits excellent thank you very much emma just um two more questions if you could inspire other asylum seekers what would your advice be or how would you do it to inspire them, I would say do as many qualifications as possible because as many as you've got, sometimes they're equivalent to a degree. So you have that option. You may not be allowed to go to university at the point in time when you're still an asylum seeker, but you can do college um, qualifications. Get them ready, put those certificate, certificates together, stack them up so that when you do get your leave to remain in the UK, you can go and find yourself a job and live a life. Excellent, fantastic response, Emma. Thank you. Uh, just one final question then. Uh, with regards to integration, uh, what can the Welsh Government do to ensure that when asylum seekers come to Wales, um, that they feel included and part of the community? Um, get, them get them involved in social activities. You know, find way... Probably the people, especially for women who got children, um, they can find maybe areas where they can take their kids to play with other children. Like what you call them again? Um, soft play, whatever. <laughs> yeah, where, where then they can meet other mothers and they can start to talk to people and they can start to ask questions as to how it works in the UK. Um, there are so many different, you know, ways of actually getting them involved in what they could do to actually uh, 
in integrate themselves into the society. So I probably the advice would be for mostly the government to find little areas like social life for these people so that they can actually start to assimilate themselves and get to meet different people. And in that way they can learn. They can learn the way of the people in the United Kingdom and then start to live as it is here. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Emma. Um, your story has really inspired us all. So thank you for your time. My name's Chris Tutt. I'm the minister here at Lisbury Baptist Church, where um, some of these interviews have been conducted over the past couple of days. Um, so we're really grateful that you've, you've chosen to come here um, because we've actually been supporting asylum seekers for quite a few years as a church. Um, a lot of people from Iran um, in particular. Um, so we're really pleased to be able to you know, support and give you this platform for people to be able to share their stories. Thank you everyone um, for just being so open and honest uh, with your stories today. Uh, and thank you to Lizory Baptist Church for allowing this opportunity for these lovely interviewees to tell their stories. Hopefully um, our stories could impact um, other asylum seekers uh, and other people um, such as refugees across South Wales and the UK um, to just keep persevering and just um, keep being them and basically um, in integrate and try um, their best within society to just do what they can um, to prosper. So thank you.